and I'll introduce you. Good, e good evening, everybody, and welcome to this um, uh, seminar in our series from the International Institute for the Study of Cuba at the University of Buckingham. And this evening, we've got the great pleasure of having uh, the Italian photographer, Roberto Fumagalli, to talk to us about his experience of Cuba and show us some of his photographs and his impressions of the island and the way in which it's um, uh, affected his life and work, let's say. And maybe we will, could lead into a discussion about the way Cuba is represented uh, visually um, in the world and how that impacts on the way it's received, maybe something like that. OK, Roberto, uh, please, uh, it's over to you and um, we'll give you, say, what, half an hour, 45 minutes to talk and then we can have questions and answers afterwards. OK, thank you, Steve, for um, inviting me. It's uh, it's a great pleasure and, and honor for me to be here today for several reasons. First of all, because I was invited by Steve and the um, institute he um, represents with which I've been collaborating for quite a long time um, with my my work, with my photographs, and also because I have the privilege and the honor to speak about a country that I really love, uh, which is Cuba. Um, I, my first uh, trip to Cuba was in 2002, when I was living in the US. I was living near Los Angeles, and I went to Cuba almost by chance because I uh, I've been a long time traveler all around the world and uh, Cuba was not in my plans but eventually I decided to go there and I immediately fell in love with the country and its people after my first trip I don't know why honestly I have no explanation whatsoever I have no idea why but uh, I decided I wanted to meet Fidel Castro and so I tried uh, as hard as I could to get in touch with him, working on several channels, the um, Cuban embassy in Rome, the Cuban consulate in Milan, where I live, uh, the International Press Center in Havana, and uh, all the uh, ways I was working on to meet him, all the roads I was uh, um, trying to, to, to follow to meet Fidel Castro. Uh, proved very hard, <laughs> really, really hard. Was not something very easy to to accomplish. Nonetheless, I kept going to Cuba, and I used to go there uh, about two or three times a year. Uh, every three four months, I would go to Cuba. That was two thousand two, two thousand three, two thousand four, five, six, seven. Uh, trying to find during one of those trips the opportunity to meet Fidel Castro. Either he was giving a speech somewhere or he was attending a show somewhere else. I would go there, get the press credentials, go there and try to talk to him. But it didn't happen. Uh, I was many times, many, many times uh, in the middle of a huge crowd of photographers, journalists from all over the world. It could be uh, May 1st, International Workers Day. It could be the opening of the school season in Havana or uh, July 26th, the national holiday of Cuba. I was there with taking my photos very close to him sometimes, but I never had the chance to talk to him or just shake my hands, nothing like that. I was just taking photos, 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 but like other 20, 30, 40, 50 people like me. So now that's the beginning of the story. If uh, you want, if you're so kind to follow me, uh, I will show you, I will share my screen and I will show you a few photos that I took during those years um, that eventually in 2006 were published in my first book, Kubava which is this one, this, this book. And uh, when I show you my photos, uh, please feel free to ask me any questions, anything. Uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, tell you some more details about that photos. And so you will follow me during uh, along this trip from my first travel to Cuba, 2002, to the um, publishing 
of this book four years later. So I will go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully it will work. And uh, let's see. Okay. Just a second. Okay. The, can you see it? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, thank you. So that's the cover of the book. Like I said, it um, it was published in 2006 after four years uh, of uh, trips to Cuba. When I first went to Cuba, I was really, really um, amazed, fascinated, and uh, caught by the, the the daily life, the everyday life in the in the streets. So every every time I had the chance to walk out of my house or my hotel with a camera on, I really took thousands, not millions, but thousands and thousands of photos because to me as a photographer, not a human being, but as a photographer, Cuba was just incredible. It was one of the best, if not the best countries I had visited until that moment. So I would take photos of people on a bicycle, like this photo, people walking around, uh, people working, uh, maybe some landscapes. And so I kept, like I said, taking photos day by day, thousands of photos. One of the, thing you, of the things you will see, you will notice looking at my photos is this. If I like a background, if I like, for example, a, a wall, like in this case, uh, that can be like the backdrop of a of a of a photo, I I freeze, I stop, I stay there with the camera ready. Sometimes with my eye in the viewfinder, holding the camera even for several minutes until something comes into the frame or someone comes into the frame, and I think that's the right moment to take the photo, which is something that is very unusual for me. Uh, like my wife says. This is not you because I have no patience whatsoever. I'm really very impatient. I don't like to wait. I'm always on the move. So that's something that I don't know why it happened in Cuba. And then from there, it happened in the uh, future trips I made to other countries. So like I said, I like one, like one place. I stop there and I wait for something to happen. In this case, this little kid on the bike riding a bicycle was uh, right in the middle between those graffiti, Viva Fidel, Viva la Revolución, Viva el 26, and I was lucky enough to take a photo at the exact moment. This is the same thing. I really liked the wall on the Malecon. I liked the Cuban flag uh, that looks like a puzzle, and I really liked the huge sailing ship there. But then I wanted something to happen. Those kids were jumping into the water, they were having fun, they were friends. And so I waited there until something uh, nice happened. And I think I was really, really lucky, really lucky. And in this case, I, I didn't notice uh, this until it was published on the book. Somebody told me that the, the, uh, the shape of the wall there with the, the sharp point and the cloud going to the right looks like a chimney. And I, I, it's something that I didn't notice. I like the, the boy jumping. I like the shadow on the wall. I like the, the, the egg and other things. Of the, uh, a like thing, I think I liked the trunk of the car, the, the, the board on the wall uh, for the new year. And then I waited for something to happen. It was, the kid running into my camera in um, Havana Vieja, in old Havana. This is something uh, with a stronger message. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the uh, history of Cuba and of uh, Latin America, but uh, here, like before, I liked the graffiti, I liked the backdrop, and I waited for somebody to pass in front of it. Otherwise, it would have been just a with a was it so this mother in the hand 
um, of uh, her daughter, and I took the photo of the daughter looking at the graffiti. And like I said, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the history of Cuba and uh, of South America, Latin America, but Alca was uh, something that uh, was starting in the early uh, 2000. I think it was 2002 or 2003, and it was the idea brought forward by the United States to create a free trade area of the Americas, where there would have been no barriers, no taxes, and free movement of goods and um, um, trade. And of course, a country like Cuba was opposed to it because in the Cuban opinion, and I, I, I tend to agree uh, with it, saw the, the, this project as a way to strangle the economy of poor countries, of weak countries like Cuba, but many others in, in Latin America. Um, eventually, after two or three years of attempts, the project failed and we haven't heard uh, of uh, ICA, of FTAA in 15 years, and I think it's gone for good. Uh, this is another picture, I, a photo I took in uh, Cuba, in Trinidad. There was this uh, nice little girl drinking a fruit juice uh, inside um, her home, and when I asked her for permission to take a photo, to take a portrait, she was a little embarrassed. So she put her uh, thumb um, in uh, her mouth, and uh, it's a very cute um, portrait. She looks uh, very pretty, very nice, and very natural. So really like this photo. This one is one of my favorite photos. Then what happened? Uh, in 2005, after about mm, 10, 12 trips to Cuba, I thought I was ready to publish my book, Kubava. Uh, by chance, a couple of years before, I had met with Roberto Chile, the personal cameraman of Fidel Castro. Um, I met him, we became best friends, we are still in touch, we're still great friends, and he gave me uh, a few suggestions, some advice about my project of publishing a, a book on Cuba. First of all, uh, he, he opened the doors of, of his home, and uh, I was a member of the family, and we never thank him enough for this, really. You people, um, um, who have been to Cuba, everybody agree, agrees that Cubans are very open, very warm people, very welcoming people. And uh, I was really lucky uh, to meet uh, one of those very um, welcoming people like Roberto Chile. Not only him, but he's the number one in the list. He's really special to me. So he told me, uh, Fuma, I think you have very nice photos. So far, we have great photos, but your book, you can publish your book, of course, I will not say no, but in case you publish a book like that, it will be like many other books that have been published before, uh, books about Cuba that not anybody can, um, that almost anybody can, can publish, can make photos of people in the street, a landscape. Uh, a nice view of Havana or of uh, the countryside. If you want to do something stronger, something new, something that has a strong message, since I know you do like, you do love the revolution, the Cuba revolution, you, you have to do something special. You have to do something more. Come back. I will help you go to places that have never been photographed before, places that are norm normally off limits to people and to photographers, especially if they are foreigners. And by that time, when you when you finish with that part of your job, you will see that your book will have a completely different look and a much stronger message. So I was a little disappointed at the beginning because, like I said, I have no patience. So I was ready to go to the publisher and print my book and get it out. So I had to hold on, wait, sit down, and think about what to do next. So we planned together what to do next, and he was great. He helped me arrange several uh, appointments with key people in Havana 
to go visit places that were, like I said before, never been photographed before, especially by a foreign uh, photographer. So we went together to, like in this case, biotechnology labs, to hospitals, schools, university, construction sites, military compounds, um, surgery rooms, prisons, and for example, in this case, it's a military compound, and this is a woman training for um, with her um, AK-47, completely covered in a black for camouflage. And so, like I said, it was a very intense three-week uh, work. But eventually, uh, I felt that my project was really getting stronger. And like I said before, I will never thank Roberto Chile enough for this help and for uh, his uh, suggestions. This is again a military compound, a, a military school to train the um, Cuban army. This is a um, agrarian cooperative. They, they basic, it's a basically a huge, huge field managed and uh, um, run by local people, of course, by Cubans that can uh, get the profit themselves from what they, they harvest. In case, in this case, those are oranges. They don't look like oranges, but they are oranges. This is um, the national, we, women national team of volleyball. They've won several uh, medals and uh, titles all over the world. They're still one of the best teams around. This photo was taken, like I said, in 2005. Famous one. Uh, Roberto, you're breaking up. It's a shame. Um, not sure what we should do. Steve? Yes. Oh, Can you hear you me? Yeah. Okay. You froze okay. for a moment there. Can you hear me? Hold on for a second, Steve. Please. I can, uh, yes, I can hear you. Can you? Yes, I can hear you now. You went silent for a, for a few moments. Okay. Yeah. How is it now? Is it better? Good. Yes. OK, I go ahead. Please stop me if you can't hear me. OK, OK, OK. OK, thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, this is one of the uh, famous dance school, schools in Havana. This is Liz Alfonso School. They then they. Yeah, you'll, you'll break and up again. The Sorry, Roberto, you're breaking up again. So, so, one moment, hold on for a second. Okay. Steve. Yeah. Okay. How is it? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Let me now. try this. How is it? Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, yes. OK, let's let's try again. Sorry about that. I don't uh, know if it's a, I think it's a problem with my connection. It could be never happened before. So we're really unlucky. All right, but Let now I see. can see myself. There you go. There you go. Okay. Oh, how is it now? It's okay. 
Okay, beautiful. Again, sorry about that. That's okay. Okay, great. Thank you. So, uh, like I said before, then we visited um, hospital and surgery rooms. This one is in Hospital Pando Ferrer. And uh, at that time, this is 2005. At that time, Opera Operacion Milagro was in full swing. What is Operacion Milagro? It was a collaboration between Cuba and Venezuela first, and then event eventually uh, Cuba and several countries of Latin America to uh, provide free eye surgery to poor people. And they were flew in, flown in by their countries at the expenses of their governments. They were treated, uh, operated in Havana for free. And then in a couple of days, two, three days, they would go back to their countries and their lives changed in, in a dramatic way for good. And that's something that, like I said, last uh, was in full swing in that period and lasted for quite a few years. And uh, hundreds of thousands of people were treated thanks to the um, Cuban doctors, Cuban surgeons. This is uh, one of my favorite portraits. It looks like a, a painting from the Renaissance. Mm. Uh, and it's a um, worker, a welder from uh, a, a factory in Havana. And uh, you can, you probably cannot see it on the screen, but the texture of the clothes of his skin are just unbelievable. You can see um, dro drops of sweat and uh, his piercing eyes are just unbelievable. I, I, I love this, uh, this it's photo. Like a Yes, exactly. That's what everybody says, Steve. Exactly. Yeah. Looks like a Rembrandt. Exactly. This is a, one of the three prisons we visited. This is a f the female section of one prison where the 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 we some women, uh, uh, pregnant mothers, uh, preg pregnant women or um, mothers can keep their babies in uh, in uh, in the prison with them. This is a, a shot of uh, a male dancer at uh, Alicia Alonso Ballet School, and I really, really like the tattoo, Che Guevara tattoo uh, on um, his ankle. Some people ask me, uh, oh, she's a, they think she's a woman, and they see uh, hair, hairy uh, forearms and hairy legs. No, he's a he's a male. He's a guy. So, <laughs> so this is a male dancer. This is the backstage uh, of uh, Alicia Alonso, one of the most famous um, dancers from Alicia Alonso School. She's one of the stars of the Cuban ballet, and uh, I really like I really like this photo because it captures a, a quick moment where the those um, um, those pearls, the necklace she's trying to fix uh, into her hair falls down and uh, it goes across uh, her face. I really, really like this photo. Very natural moment in the in the backstage. This is Cabaret Tropicana. Everybody who go, uh, almost everyone, everybody who goes to Cuba will visit at least once Cabaret Tro Tropicana. It's really worth it. I like this photo because it's blurred. It's uh, it looks like blotches of ink. I really like it. I really like this photo. This is a construction site. They were building the University of Havana, um, the um, IT section, the, the computer school in Havana. And um, I was uh, I was invited there to, to, to take photos of the construction site. It was almost completed. And uh, the year later, it was inaugurated. This is Fidel Castro. Like I told you before, I had the many, many possibilities uh, to, to uh, see him among other photographers and uh, reporters, journalists. This is May 1st, 2005. And uh, we were, I, I think, probably 100, maybe more um, photographers and reporters from all over the world. Uh, in little groups, two or three 
uh, at most, we were allowed to get very close to him. This is Plaza de la Revolución, Revolution Square, where all the huge meetings and rallies took place. And uh, if uh, you have been there, you know that there is like a small hill, a small mound, where the Jose Marti um, mausoleum is placed. Fidel Castro was speaking from there, and we were allowed to get very close to him, stay there between him and the huge crowd behind, and take photos for maybe a couple of minutes. Then his bodyguards would make us go away very quick and give our place to somebody else. I was there, and it was, I was so uh, moved and so, I don't know how to say, maybe I got very emotional because I was very close to him, but mostly it was because he was talking to probably one million people and they were all behind me. And so I kept taking photos. I had two cameras and I kept taking photos and photos, photos, and I didn't check the F stop, the shutter speed, nothing. So when, when I went back in my hotel room and I downloaded the photos on my computer, I, I saw that they were mostly black because I, <laughs> I really messed it up big time. And I was really lucky because I could, I could only see his shape, the, the silhouette of Fidel Castro, but the, the, the details were almost lost. It was pitch black. I was really lucky because uh, when we worked on the post-production of the book, a great guy here in Milan was able to keep the sky behind, but then get the details back. And so <laughs> I can see, you can see, everybody can see Fidel Castro and uh, in, in his real colors. This is one photo I took in 2004 during a huge, huge event along the Malecon uh, on, on, on the Caribbean Sea in Havana. And it lasted, Fidel Castro gave a 15 minute speech early in the morning. I think it was about 8, 8.30 in the morning. Then he started walking along the Malecon and all the people, the Cuban people followed behind him. And it lasted, lasted, I think, about 10 or 12 hours. And I was able to take photos, move against the traffic. So people were, were coming toward me and was going the opposite way to take photos of different groups of people marching in, uh, in that occasion. And I, I had the chance to even go back to my room, relax, take a shower and get lunch, then walk back to the Malecon. And people were still uh, getting ready to march. So it took such a long time because it was a massive thing. And it was in those years, I don't know if you remember, maybe you remember, I'm sure you do, uh, the situation between the US with George W. Bush and Cuba was very tense, really, really tense. And uh, the United States were uh, uh, implementing very strong and harsh measures to strengthen the blockade against Cuba. And uh, Cuba had nothing to do after all uh, th those decades, 50, 60 years of blockade, had nothing else to do except showing the US that were against it. They were fighting back with no weapons, no guns, nothing, but they were fighting back the only way they could. So getting people together, saying no to the, to the blockade. This was one of the biggest thing, uh, uh, mass rally I've, I've, I've been able to witness in Havana. This is what happened that day too. This is a um, Cuban man, getting ready to start his march, showing a photo of George W. Bush looking like Hitler. This is one of the photos that Steve probably knows better and that have, has been used many times uh, by him and other um, people. And I'm very proud of this photo. I'm really happy when people use it. Those are kids playing um, in an early morning, um, square in the early morning and be, it's nice because they look like as if they were in a black and white photo 
but the Cuban flags behind are in color. And I really, really like this photo. Uh, this, uh, in the first years, two years I was in Cuba, like I said, I used to go around the city, walk around the streets of Havana, especially Central Havana and Old Havana, and I would take hundreds of photos of portraits of people, people in everyday um, situations. I was taking a photo of this uh, nice elderly man, and we were talking, we were uh, chatting before taking the photo. When I got ready to take my first photo, probably the, the little girl behind heard the noises, heard the voices, and opened the door. And so she, uh, she came out, she peered out, and I was lucky and quick enough to take that photo. So I call this photo double portrait because it was not intended to be this way, but it came out much better with the little girl behind. This is the um, mental hospital uh, in Havana. Uh, this um, patient uh, called me. After, I, I, I was there for a few, quite a few hours and uh, this man, approached me when I was there alone doing nothing. And he told me, he asked me, can you please take a photo? Can you please take a portrait of me? And uh, I said, oh, sure, I can. Because I, I, was, I was happy he asked me because I really loved his face and his eyes are just amazing. He was holding this banknote um, and that was his salary, daily salary for uh, doing some small jobs inside the hospital. And he was just given that money by one of the nurses working there. So he was very proud. And when I took the photo of him, he raised the banknote like this to probably to tell me, to show me, look, this is what the money I made because I wore today. I really like this photo. This is a little kid playing in the street uh, in the rain with um, his baseball. Baseball, I'm sure you know, is the national sport in in Cuba. Another very popular sport is um, boxing. This is a little kid, a little boy, training in a gym in um, Old Havana with his boxing gloves on. This is again uh, a shot of baseball. You will see people pay, playing baseball everywhere. Uh, children, adults, uh, seniors, you will see them playing uh, baseball almost everywhere in Havana, in the street, in a park, in a, in a yard. It's very popular. And you can see written on the, on the, uh, on the pavement, Viva Fidel y Chavez. At that time, the connection, the, um, the friendship between Cuba and Venezuela was really, really, really strong, really strong. And Chavez was visit, visiting Havana in those days. This is the last photo uh, for this presentation today and the last photo of my book. Uh, you can see it says it's a billboard on the street and it says Venceremos. Uh, the title Cuba Va, which means uh, Cuba moves forward. Uh, Cuba, uh, Cuba keeps going ahead uh, was chosen because even though Cuba has a lot of problems, a lot of contradictions, uh, life is not easy in Cuba. Um, despite the uh, American blockade, all the problems that Cuba uh, has had in all these 60, 70 years um, after the victory of the revolution, Cuba keeps moving forward. And uh, with this photo, I want it, it's taken from inside the car, looking outside. You can see the cracked windshield and there is a rainstorm outside. You, you see uh, the message is, I have a broken windshield. It's raining like uh, hell. Uh, the, the road is uh, filthy and slippery and everything, but venceremos, we will win. So despite everything, despite all the problems we have, we will win. And I really, really uh, wanted to close this presentation today with you. 
and uh, my book with uh, this photo. If you want to get in touch with me, this is my email. Uh, I also have a website. I have uh, a profile on Instagram and on Facebook. You please feel free to, to send me a message. Uh, I will be more than happy to, to, to reply, to answer. Uh, if you have any curiosity, uh, something uh, as you want uh, me to tell you, want me to explain, it will be an honor, a pleasure for me uh, to, to reply. Then, Big surprise. Uh, you probably forgot after all these uh, 30, about 30 minutes of talk of photos, you probably forgot and why I started going to Cuba, what I wanted to accomplish going to Cuba. I wanted to meet Fidel Castro. Here it is. I, I made it. And huh. uh, <laughs> the first photo is October 2005, the first time I met him. The second photo on the right is uh, the second time I met him, April, uh, sorry, May 1st, 2006. And uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. Every time I see those photos, uh, even though many years have passed and uh, many things have happened, Fidel Castro is no longer with us. But every time I see those photos, uh, it's quite something for me. So I, I made it, I was lucky. I had great people helping me get in there. And uh, it's something that I will always uh, keep in my heart and um, very proud of it, really proud of it. That's it. Uh, let's see, okay. Can you hear me? Can you see me now? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, Okay. you need to stop sharing. Uh, everyone can see me. Okay, uh, stop sharing. Let, okay, let me see. There you go. Okay, Fantastic. is it okay now? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank that you very much. That was wonderful. That was wonderful, Roberto. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, everybody. I Thank should you. Have, I should have said at the beginning that uh, we owe you a great debt because you allowed us to use your photographs um, for free on our website many, many years ago, and it's been a great help to us. So we are very, very grateful to you for that. My really, my pleasure. It's an honor for me, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Steve, thank you. Um, the first question that comes to my mind, and if people have got questions, please raise your hands and and uh, I'll come to you. Um, the first question that raised in my mind is, did you get a chance to talk to Fidel much? And if so, what kind of things did you talk about? And what, what kind of, what, what did he say to you? Okay. <laughs> the first time I met him, the photo on the left. Uh, can you can you see me? I'm probably a little uh, dark. No, yeah, we can see you. That's fine. Okay. Please, Steve, tell me if I have to turn the light on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the first time I met him, Steve, it was in uh, October 2005. You cannot even imagine, Steve, how hard I tried to get close to him. I fi finally managed to get there. And it was in a theater in Car uh, Karl Marx Theater in Havana. And he approached uh, me because he was, he was leaving this, the, the, the theater after a show uh, in support of Puerto Rico. So he was leaving. He was, he was saying goodbye to people close to him, to guests that were sitting close to him. When he came closer to me, I thought, I will never let him go now without stopping him because it's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. If he goes away, I'm done, I'm done. So I stopped him and uh, I hold him with my hands and I hold me, really grabbed his arms and his bodyguards were looking at me <laughs> as if I was crazy for two, for two reasons. First of all, because I was really holding him. I have a video, I was holding him with both hands and second, at that time, I had my fingers full of rings with skulls. <laughs> uh, and, and I was, uh, to them, I was probably a freak or a, 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 a uh, nutcase, I don't know. Then I told him, Fidel, I have, I, I'm an Italian photographer. I'm working on a, a book on Cuba that will be published next year. And I would love to show it to you when it's uh, published. And he's told me, oh, sure, we're looking forward to it. And then, uh, I have a, a tattoo here on my arm, which says, the only tattoo I have, it says Fidel. It's written like handwritten, it says Fidel. So I raised my 
uh, sleeve, the shirt, and I showed him, look, Fidel, I have something to show you. And so he, he laughed, he said, Wah! and gave me a slap like this. And I have a photo of that moment too. And he told me, so we will be waiting for the book. And he went away. When he went away, I was like really shaking. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Then I went back to work and six months later, I met him again on this main stage uh, of May 1st uh, um, parade in, uh, in uh, Plaza de la Revolución. I was invited there because I had an exhibition of my book in uh, Memorial José Martí. And I was invited there by, the, by his uh, secretary um, at, at the time, Carlitos Valenciaga. And uh, when he uh, finished the, the, the speech, he was walking towards his car, surrounded by his bodyguards. When his secretary, Carlitos, saw me, and he called me, come forward, come, come. And he told, the, uh, told Fidel, Fidel, he's the Italian photographer, because Fidel had my book. Uh, he got my book a couple of weeks before, so he was able to check it out. And Roberto Chile told me that he saw Fidel looking at the book. So I knew that Fidel knew about my book. So he came, uh, I, I went close to him and said, hello, Fidel, thank you for inviting me. And uh, it's an honor for me to be here. And he asked me, oh, where did you, how could you take those photos? Those, those photos are great, congratulations. If you need anything, please let me know. And then he went away. For <laughs> me, it was enough. So for me, it was enough. That's what happened with Fidel Castro. Right. Very brief. Moments, but very, very intense. Really right. intense. Cheryl, Cheryl has got her hand up. Cheryl, do you want to ask your question? Cheryl, you need to unmute. Uh, no. So, um, uh, as it happens, um, Roberto, I know Roberto Chile as well. Um, and I've uh, I've had a, a, a good relationship with him, although I, I lost touch with him in the past. So afterwards, I'd like to uh, get his latest email address from you, if, if possible, and I'll write to him. Um, but I first met uh, Chile when he came to London um, and he was making a film about Fidel with um, Estela Bravo. Yes, sure. The, the filmmaker. OK. And and we had we, we we got to know each other quite well then. Um, I was interested. To... Excuse, me, Steve. Excuse me if I interrupt you. Uh, our guests are telling me in the chat that they cannot unmute their microphones. Oh, let me see if I can do it. OK. Uh, allow happens... Mike. Uh, yeah, let's try that. Can you can you say something now, Cheryl? See if that works. Yes, that's better. Thank you. Sorry about that. OK, <laughs> I'll, I'll allow the mics and cameras. Actually, we can do that, too, I think. Gosh, we get vision as well. Yeah, if you want to put your if you want to show us your face, that's up to you. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, ask your question anyway. No, I still can't get the uh, camera, but I just wondered, Roberto, whether you had any plans for a sequel, a new <laughs> book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be great. O honestly, honestly, um, I, I don't know. I really don't know for several reasons. Uh, I've published two more books after uh, Cuba Va. One was about Cuba, North Korea and Iran. And the second one was about 29 years of travels. Uh, all my travels in 29 years. And uh, the best part, the biggest part of that uh, last book was uh, about Cuba. But honestly, Cheryl, I don't think I will be able to publish another book on Cuba, a sequel. I, but you never know. That's that's an, an an idea that I could bring forward and work on it. But quite frankly, I have no idea. OK, you have other <laughs> things to do, I understand. <laughs> Thank you so much for asking. Thank you. Sarah's got her hand up. Sarah, can you see? hang on? Let me see if I can. Hi, Roberto. Hi, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Well, I just wanted to know what makes a good photograph or a good photographer? 
uh, I think that the good uh, Sarah, I think that the good photographer um, is someone who works with his or her heart. Uh, I don't conceive, I cannot conceive uh, photography without passion, without heart, without emotion. Uh, that's why I don't do uh, food, I don't do weddings, I don't do architecture, because to me, uh, they, those subjects, those topics don't bring me any emotions. I, there must be, for sure, people who get uh, emotions and great feelings out of a nice building, of a nice uh, plate with food, but that's not me. That's not me. But if you like food, if you are into food, into weddings and into architecture, and uh, you do that with passion, you will be a great photographer. At the same time, uh, what makes a good photo, uh, a photo that ha has been taken with heart, with passion. Uh, that's, uh, I think, it's, it's uh, the, the, what I put into practice when I worked as a photographer in the past and now. If I don't feel it, I don't take a photo. That's, uh, that, that's, that's very simple, that's very um, um, sometimes taken for granted, but I think it's the secret for good results in life, not only photography. You can be a um, heart doctor, heart surgeon, you can be a plumber, you can be a farmer, you can be a teacher. If you do things with your heart, that's what ev every time, that's what I say every time I talk to uh, students and young people, if you do things with your heart, with passion, Maybe you will not get there, uh, but at least you will have tried and you will have no, um, you will have no remorse and no um, regrets for not trying. Uh, Treasure, Treasure has asked, Treasure. When, did you, when did you get the Fidel tattoo? I got it in 2004. I got it in 2004. And like I said, it's the only tattoo I have. It's, uh, it's not even nice looking. <laughs> uh, it's it's horrible. It's horrible. I even I even passed out. I even passed out. I fainted because I was so stressed and so under pressure that I fainted. But I'm so proud of it. I'm still uh, very proud of it. So but obviously, that's that's after you started going to Cuba, 2000. Yeah. After, so what, after. what what is it what was it about Cuba? Did you know anything about Cuba before you went there? What 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 sparked your interest in Cuba in the first place, Roberta? Uh I didn't know much about Cuba. Uh but I've always always since I was a child been fascinated by the the uh the person, the personality of Fidel Castro. I don't know why. I have no, really have no explanation. But it happened to me many times, even before and after meeting Fidel Castro, that I really get into something uh, which most of the times is meeting someone and uh, uh, for no reason. I really don't know why. Uh, and if I want to meet someone that represents something for me, can be anything, I really work very hard to get there. And I've done it with um, several people uh, uh, I was able to uh, meet Chavez. I was able to meet um, sports celebrities and uh, uh, even uh, very famous um, inmates in Italy. Uh, one, just one, sorry, one very famous inmate um, because uh, I, I get this sort of um, fascination. I'm not saying I agree with them, all of them, uh, their political views of what I've done before, uh, maybe they are not uh, um, mo role models, but if I really uh, want uh, to get in touch with somebody, I will do my best to get there. And that's what happened with Fidel Castro. I, I was fascinated by him and I went there and then everything happened afterwards with him and with Cuba. Oh, Treasure's added that, um, and this must this would have been under the Operation Miracle uh, program. My grandmother's eyesight was saved by Cuban doctors. Wow. My was... first pair of glasses were given to me by them as well. Your wow. images of the doctors were very touching. 
Uh, oh. Tasha, I should add, is one of my students, and she's from San Lucia in the Caribbean. Sure. sure. Oh, yeah. Many, many uh, small states from the Caribbean took part in that program. I, I remember. I remember. The beginning was with Venezuela, but like I said before, many, many other small countries from the Caribbean and Central America went to Cuba. That's very nice. That's great. Thank you, Tricia. Uh, Adam has his hand up. Adam, uh, let me see if I can allow your mic. You can speak. I think you should be able to speak now. Yeah. You... Do you hear me? Yeah. 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 Uh, that was excellent. Thanks very much, Roberto. Superb. I was only cu I was curious as to what was the reaction um, from your peers and and uh, people, uh, your colleagues in general, in terms of A, you're going with B, the book since. Uh, was it something they supported, but they were sceptical about? <clears throat> what was it? You know, were they curious? What I'm just wondering what your peers thought of it. OK, thank you. Thank you, Adam. You know, uh, in general, the uh, the book Kubava was well uh, received and uh, was really liked not only by uh, my peers, my my um, colleagues, but by general public. Uh, it had more success, honestly, than I expected. And uh, out of my three books, Kubava was is certainly by far the one that had most uh, more success. But as you can imagine. I got. I also got um, many, uh, not bad reviews, but uh, um, how, how can I say bad comments? Because this bo book, even though I clearly wrote that Cuba has problems, contradiction, difficulty, it's not. It's not paradise on earth, but this uh, book is pro Cuba. Is uh, uh, shows my love for Cuba, for the Cubans and for the revolution. That caused me some problems, some frictions when uh, during some presentations with photographers, but even um, people in audience. Uh, sometimes it happened not during the presentation of the book when people saw the tattoo uh, that they could. Uh, that it happened. I remember once I was in Greece and uh, a woman came to me in a, in a very uh, strong and uh, harsh way to not to complain, but to tell me that he didn't like it. And so we started an argument, but then I had the, 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 there were no common grounds to talk. So I had just to leave with my opinions and she left with hers. But like I said, this book was well received, but sometimes I did have a few, let's say, problems with it. I'm still proud of it. I'm still proud. Yes, thank you, and, and rightfully so. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for asking. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the that's the great uh, question, isn't it, uh, Roberto? That um, there is an uh, obviously a strong views held around Cuba from uh, the other side, if you like, mm -hmm. and you your book is yeah very very supportive, very favourable towards sure. towards the revolution and. I guess to some extent you did you set out actually to do that deliberately to kind of provide a, a counter narrative, if you like, to some of the negative things that are said. Did, is that is that the motivation? Was that? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, Steve, uh, like I said at the beginning, many uh, books, most of the books on Cuba are. Books with uh, photos that I would say not everybody can take, but they're e easier because I mean you have you have to be a good photographer to make good photos. But walking around the city, taking photos of a landscape of of people in the street, it's easier than getting into the life, daily life of a, an an entire nation like this. So uh, it's it was not very easy for me to 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 do that. And I, I man managed to, to accomplish that thanks to Roberto Chile. And when I went into the, the, the very heart of the Cuban Revolution, I, I saw by, with my own eyes that I had uh, what the revolution was doing and what the work behind the revolution was. And I really felt that I had to do something to, to, to do something that uh, could give a different message 
compared to what regular books on Cuba are, if we are talking about nice to uh, nice photos of landscape or the books against Cuba normally say. And there are so many books on Cuba. I have them here behind me. I have 90% uh, of the books I have behind me are pro Cuba, but 10% are against Cuba in a very harsh, very harsh way. For the third or fourth time, Steve, I say Cuba is not perfect. There are many problems there. Many mistakes have been done by Fidel Castro himself, but still it's a country that is worth knowing. And uh, uh, with my book, I tried to, to, to show people a different uh, side of Cuba. And I remember uh, the people sometimes stopped me and told me, I didn't know this about Cuba. I didn't know they were doing this and that. And so even, even if one single person who read my book came out of the presentation, went home with a different opinion, a better uh, opinion about Cuba, I accomplished something. Wonderful. Uh, Trash has added, in the early 2000s, much of mainstream media vilified Fidel and made Cuba sound so scary. Were you surprised to see it for yourself? Uh, I was not surprised. Honestly, I was not surprised to see that. Uh, actually, I was not surprised to see that people kept uh, shooting at Cuba at Fidel because that has been going on for 50 years. So many lies, so many lies, so many lies. Unbelievable. And then, yes, I was surprised to see by myself for with my eyes that even though there were problems, but many things were working. And if we keep thinking that Cuba is a small, small country, a poor country, uh, a developing country that has been under siege for 60 years, uh, they've been trying to uh, get over with the revolution with Fidel Castro for so many years. If we keep thinking about it and then we look at Cuba, Cuba keeps moving forward, keeps uh, showing us some lessons that we have to learn. The um, international cooperation with uh, poor countries in South America, Africa, Asia, with uh, doctors, uh, teachers, uh, that Cuba is, uh, is keeping alive is something that we should learn because sometimes we forget about it. We are much richer. We have many more chances. We have many more resources to give others, but we forget. So I was I was not surprised to see people shooting at Fidel, shooting against Cuba. I was surprised to see by myself that the the the, the truth, the reality, was different. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, has anyone got anything else they'd like to say? Oh, okay. I want to, oh, Adam is very kind. I yes, Adam was said. Where he is. Thank you so much. I, I don't know if you will read this. But I will. I will. He may do. He may do. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, all I can say is uh, thanks again, Roberto, for, for doing pleasure. this. And uh, sometime later this evening, this video will go up on our website uh, on our YouTube channel. OK, great. and I'll be sending out a notice about that later on to everyone that attended and so on. Beautiful. Um, our next um seminar is in two weeks time with professor ernesto dominguez lopez from havana university you will be visiting our university of buckingham for a week okay. and he will be presenting on u.s policy towards cuba in the 2000s oh. so but anyway um uh best of luck with all your Thank you. work roberto and once again very many thanks for doing this for us and um I uh, hope to see everybody again next time. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you, everybody. Thank Take you. Care. It was a pleasure for me. You too. Take care. And Ciao. me, Bye. Steve, don't forget to send me a message. I will give you uh, Roberto Chile's uh, email. Okay. Okay, no problem. Ciao. Thank Ciao. Thank you, Ciao. Steve. Thank, Thank you very much. You, Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.